Perfect. Right. So uh, welcome, everybody, uh, to our second session of the day. And this is my, myself and Johnny's last session uh, this week. So we are a little bit demob happy. So uh, if there's any questions in the chat that you want to ask us, um, we, we're going to just we we'll just answer it. So even if it's a, a brutally honest one. Um, so as uh, Brian said today, we're or, or this session, we're going to look at uh, the differences between a Galvo and a plotter type of laser. So probably I'd say, I don't know whether you say Johnny, but you know, most of our customers would have a plotter. That might just be because that's maybe the sort of maybe, maybe the sort of more applications or maybe where we've been uh, active in different marketplaces that that's that's the most use. But I see certainly over here in Ireland, uh, there's there's more growing uh, interest in the Galvos and there's more more demand for it. What, what about yourself? I mean, you've been using Galvos for. Uh, <laughs> a lot longer than I have, so uh... 15 years or more at this point. But yeah, uh, I, I would be inclined to agree. I think the majority of our customer base are more on the plotter side than the Galvo side. I think it goes goes back to our history with uh, with rubber engraving. It's uh, it's an application which lends yeah. itself far more so for uh, for plotters than, than Galvo machines. But we're we're very proud to offer both to be able to offer solutions on both fronts. Um, the the Galvo machines tend to be more specific markets, more industrial things like uh, you know high speed engraving for jewellery, that kind of thing. So it's, it tends to be more more specific areas where the plotters can be sort of more broad brush and, and take on the, you know a wider variety of areas of work. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. And so that, that's it then, isn't it? Really? Thanks for joining us, Latest. No. Um, so uh, again, morning, Lovian, and any, anybody in chat, put, put uh, say hello. Um, and what I was supposed to ask at the beginning is, uh, if you have a either a plotter or a galvanometer system, uh, what you have, what you've got with it, um, or what you use with it. Uh, what, what you know, materials and what what sort of items you uh, you either cut, engrave, or mark with it. Yeah, yeah. Now, before Absolutely. we get started, there, we have a, a lovely video uh, which actually tells us uh, everything we need to know. Uh, so uh, about <laughs> the difference between a Galvo and a and a and a, and a, and a plotter. So I'm just going to run this uh, for us to start so, with. So again, what we'll... watch the volume, guys? Because yeah, it's just <laughs> half half the volume you've got because it is quite loud. So uh, in three, two, one, away we go. The main difference between laser plotters and Galvo systems is the way that the laser beam is applied to the materials from the laser source. With a laser plotter, the laser beam is directed by a fixed mirror parallel with an XY plotter axis system to a focus lens and focus there. For the movement of the laser beam on the material, the X and Y axes are moved according to the required position. The laser beam is perpendicular to the material. The size of the maximum processing area is defined by the size of the machine. As a general rule, the bigger the area, the bigger the machine must be. During engraving, the laser head moves from left to right and back, making the design visible line by line. During cutting, on the other hand, the contours of the design are traced and the workpiece is cut out. Trotec laser plotters are available with a CO2 laser, fiber laser, or as Speediflex with both laser sources. Galvo lasers use high-speed motor-driven mirrors to steer the laser beam through a lens. The laser beams onto two movable mirrors with angles that are dynamically and accurately set by galvanometer drives. The underlying lens focuses the beam and directs it towards the workpiece for processing. This process allows the laser beam to be guided over a workpiece with any geometry at speeds of several feet or meters per second. Since the length of the laser beam varies depending on position, a special lens is used to ensure that the laser is always focused on the workpiece. The size of the processing area depends on the lens you are using. The longer the focal length, the bigger the processing area. Protec Galvo lasers are available with a fiber or CO2 laser source. Okay, excellent. I see well, that, that, that. Nothing to add, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it, isn't it, really? Um, 
Okay, so yeah, so that's the difference between the galvanometer and the fiber lasers. Uh, that's probably a bit more technical uh, in terms of what we're going to do. So we've got a few uh, a few slides to go through just to talk about a few applications uh, that we typically see people using uh, the plotters and the galvos for. We've then got a demonstration of both machines so we can see them working side by side. So we've got uh, so I've got a speedy uh, 300 uh, next to me here, and Johnny's uh, got his galvo from uh, earlier if you were with us uh, uh, ready to go. And we're going to do the same files just so you can see the same results now obviously it's going to be something that both machines can do uh, rather than you know something random uh, so you can see the results between both of them okay let me just share my screen one second hide that okay that's a big galvo that is a big galvo that's a nice <laughs> speed marker 1300 that's a lovely one uh, so Johnny, you're you're the Galvo man, so take it away. Johnny, so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So Galvos, what are they good for? Why might we want to use one? As you saw earlier, we were doing engraving on some rings. So you can, because the laser beam isn't perpendicular like it is on the speedies, you can come in at an angle and you can get inside the diameter of a cylindrical object like a ring or, or any other industrial product. So jewellery is, is very, very popular because uh, Galvo laser with a with a fiber laser it's going to be able to mark pretty much anything metallic that you like um, regardless of you know reflectivity hardness any of the material properties so it, it's great for jewelry applications what else is it good for yeah a lot of industrial work so if you see in the middle of the page there at the top you can see the little data matrix code on the uh, on the uh, of component there so 2d barcodes serial numbers batch codes uh, traceability is more important than ever these days so being able to permanently and indelibly mark something in a way that lasts for years and years is incredibly useful and uh, and easy to do also we're not causing uh, any real damage to to components when we're doing that we're not like we're blasting into it several millimeters and and ruining the strength and integrity of a product we're, we're just taking off maybe a few microns from the surface but leaving a very very permanent inscription so if you look at the bottom of the page there there's a few plastic components um, most of our galva machines are fiber lasers which traditionally uh, most people think are just a metal marking technology but not strictly so there are uh, several engineering plastics that work brilliantly with a fiber laser to get a nice high contrast permanent mark that way too so it's not just uh, not just metal components plastic components work equally well in a lot of cases okay oh next slide pardon me and this is what we saw uh, earlier so if, if you're watching earlier uh, we showed a little video about the rot uh, the virtual rotary on the on the Gal Galvo systems, which is which is very cool. Uh, so yeah, the, there is a video which uh, we showed um, in in the previous session, which uh, which shows this, and it basically means that we can, without the rot aid of the rotary, engrave onto curved surfaces. So that's something that uh, obviously a, a, flat, a traditional uh, plotter laser uh, would struggle with. Anything to add, Johnny? No, no, only uh, to recap what we saw earlier. So the, the new yeah. uh, the virtual rotary, far faster than actually spinning an object in a physical fixture it, yeah. because the laser can just scan across it without having to wait for the part to move under it because with a Galvo machine, you can't uh, engrave something while it's spinning. We need it to be very you know, still and uh, accurately positioned for that. So we can, if we keep the object still with a, with a virtual rotary, we can just scan over it adjusting the Z dynamically as we go, the Z axis, the, the focus yep. axis, and instead of having to wait for, a, wait for a physical rotary axis to spin. Exactly. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to what maybe typically uh, our, our customers or, or plotter users would, would use their machine for. So the main uh, difference, as Johnny said, or one of the main differences, Johnny says, is the between the the direction that the la the uh, laser beam is actually uh, traveling to the material, so with a with a plotter laser we are going straight down. So this leads itself to delivering more power in the in the one place. Um, uh, so f and for for cutting purposes, so effectively. So if anybody's you know cutting any acrylic or wood or anything like that, um, paper card. Um, I mean paper and card can be done with a galva as well, but but certainly anything sort of anything with a thickness uh, would really realistically need a plotting uh, a plotter laser 
So typically customers would be, uh, you know, model makers, for example. So lo lots of architectural model makers, architectural universities uh, using it for their uh, their models uh, and other various models as well. So film sets, uh, you know, so, so props and things like that. Again, very good at, for cutting intricate items uh, for, for con and constructing them together. Uh, we work with different materials. So uh, the other main benefit of a plotting laser uh, or a plotter would be that the fact that we can have two different laser sources in the same machine. So with a Galvo, you've either got a fiber laser Galvo or a CO2 laser Galvo. With uh, the speedy range, we can have both together. So we can have the CO2 laser and the fiber laser in the one machine. That's the flex machines. So that's available on the speedy 100, uh, speedy 300, speedy 360 and speedy 400 models. The reason why you might do this, uh, there's, there's, there's a number of reasons why that would be uh, of benefit. Uh, one is the fact that you can mark objects with different materials. Uh, so, for example, if you look at the knives on the right hand side, uh, the handles which are in wood, they were engraved with the CO2 laser uh, on, the, on the speedy. And then the metal uh, of the blade was engraved with the fiber laser of the speedy. And so this can be achieved without even changing the lens. So we've got a, a, a dual wave flex lens that can uh, let both the uh, wavelengths of light or laser light through uh, through it to mark. Uh, and we again, we've got the control on the Z axis height of where we have it. So we can put them both into focus as well. So again, you can with one operation, you can mark both items. But also, you know, it gives you the option to mark you know, one job you, you're cutting acrylic or, or marking wood, the next you're engraving onto metal or, or a plastic. So again, you just need one machine uh, for, for, for all the applications. That's an excellent point, actually, Andy. Yeah, because with the with the flex machine, even if all you ever want to do is mark metals with it, the flex is still a great option because it allows you to make a simple fixture to hold all your objects in the machine, uh, yeah. just to hold them still so you can chuck a load of parts in the machine, run it over them very, very quickly, because, of course, the speedies are better the more you can get in at once when it comes to engraving. Um, yeah. Because then not only have you got your fixture to get the most out of production, you've also just made your drawing for where all your artwork goes on each of these individual objects. So it's uh, it's yeah. the flex is a superb option for, for that kind of work. Yeah, exactly. So I suppose what we'd say is if you're marking, so the sample we've got is a small aluminium uh, um, aluminium uh, tag, effectively. Uh, what I'd say is, you know, with the Galvo, you're putting one at a time, or maybe you can create a small jig with which you can put a few in depending on which Galva you have. Uh, whereas with the, like, say, like Johnny said, with the Speedy, we can create the fixture, we can lay out maybe a couple of hundred at a time and just set it off and go, you know, set it off going while you're doing something else. So again, it's more more the, you know, we'll come on to it a bit later, but, you know, there might be labor difference, uh, differences in labor time and saving uh, between the two systems. I think we've had a, about 170 pens in the Speedy 300 at one point, just to give an idea. <laughs> Some, something like that, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to change this over. Oops, sorry, I don't want you to be big. Hi. Hello. <laughs> right. So, again, I've just got a few examples here. So, rather than showing you at the slide, we've got a few examples. Again, uh, on the day one, myself and uh, Chris Green, we did a, a sample zone which showed a few more ideas of what you can do with the different types of laser. Uh, so, for example, this is something that we can create with uh, a plotting laser. So, again, this is a CO2 application. With the with the wood, but we can cut it out, and we can also engrave on it as well. Whereas the galvanometer would would only really be able to engrave that uh, uh, that. Now it would do the engraving faster than than the plotter generally, but uh, again, you can't can't do the cutting out. Um, what a lot of customers might use it for is the get that closer is this type of material, which is uh, engraving laminate. So again, this is a CO2 application. So this would be for, you know, labeling, signage, you know, all sorts. Uh, we've got, I've got some uh, really nice examples of it, of using different, and they're just, they're just sort of stuff. Oh, nice. Together, but they're, they're really nice examples of the different types you can get. So these, this is a couple of different um, sheets stuck together. So effectively we've got the, the maroon on white and then the blue on white as well. So again, this, this type of application on a, uh, on a plotting laser because we can engrave and cut in in the same operation you know it will engrave first and then 
and then cut, uh, but it's in the same operation. And where, where would you find these lovely materials with which to engrave, Andy? Is, <laughs> is there an online shop for, for there getting There may well things? be. There may well be an online shop. So if you go to engraving-supplies.co.uk if you're in the UK, or obviously if you uh, you know contact your local Trotec office if you're, if you're not in the UK. But yeah, we have an online shop uh, which has got all these materials. So the, the engraving laminates, the trolleys, uh, acrylics and you know, metals and all sorts. So yeah, contact us. Showing this example as well. So this is laser cut acrylic. Again, this is something that the, the plotter can do. Uh, you know, you've got the different colours there, but effectively it's just cutting some three mil acrylic. I don't know if you can see that. It's a bit difficult. Um, and really, the thickness of material you can uh, you can cut with a laser sort of depends on the the, the power. Uh, I mean, there's a few other options. Obviously, the the more advanced machines can potentially cut thicker objects with um, with less power. But generally, you're kind of looking at more power means means thicker in terms of cutting because you can deliver that power to the material um one example we showed the other day as well which is the uh jimmy hendrix so hopefully i'm not uh hopefully you can see that so this is actually a flex um uh, a, a flex application so you can see it's obviously cut at the top so all the lettering has been cut out but the engraving has been done with a fiber laser so you get a, a slightly different result engraving uh, cast acrylic with a fiber laser than you do with a CO2, you get you get a much smoother um, smoother engraving. So so basically, yeah. So this is the one material with the two different sources. Again, it's cre creating a really good uh, application. I don't, we we already did CO2 versus fiber the other day, but just uh, yeah, yeah. Why that is the fiber is it, it focuses down to a much finer point than the CO2 laser. So if you've got a material that will work with either, you're going to get more detail with the fiber than you would with the CO2. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Um, so just going back to the, uh, and again, I think with a, the real benefit of a plotter, I suppose we'll come to it in the end, but I think it's it's the ability to cut the size that you can have and also the, the breadth of materials because you can have those two different lasers in the same machine. So if, I mean, great, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're looking at five galvos, then fine, you know, you can have CO2 ones, you can have, you can have fiber ones, uh, but if you're just looking at the one machine to do everything, then maybe a flex, uh, uh, you know, a, a flex would be the option because you can have the CO2 and the fiber. Sure. So, as, as we're going to be uh, be getting on to uh, very shortly. Uh, in fact, the, now. The <laughs> oh, yes, now. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the thing with a galvo, having such a small working area, is you constantly need to be feeding it and unloading, unloading, reloading, reloading, unloading. Uh, whereas with the flex, you can chuck a load of parts in there and basically just leave it running and uh, and free you up to to be uh, be doing something else. Yeah, so you should see now I've changed my screen to inside my Speedy 300. So uh, again, just so you know, it's live. There we go. Um, so what we've got is um, we've got I've just got four uh, pieces of anodized aluminium. Just four little plates again. Uh, Johnny's got the same. And we're just going to run a engraving off uh, just to show you what they look like. Now, Johnny's also got one there. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you've got that. Uh, you, you, you're more you technical see, than me. You can uh, you can have two screens. Actually, you've got two computers. That's why. Yeah. I've, I've got uh, <laughs> I've got two little T slots here just for my position. I would like to have had a third on this side just so I can uh, butt it up against there. But uh, but I've only got the two, so I've just jammed some material in there just to give you my position on that. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, so again, <laughs> what we're what we're doing on the plotter is we're also using this uh, just uh, the rulers on the sides and the back just to line that up but again if i was doing uh if i was doing the whole sheet i would create a jig to do this to get a more accurate positioning but with four and you know to be honest with you it's 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 just a demonstration so not too too worried about it um i just moved that camera in a little bit so we can see it there so what right. i'll do is I'll, I'll start my machine because uh, surprisingly enough, if, if anybody saw the demonstration earlier, uh, the gal was going to be a lot quicker than the, spe than the speedy, even though the speedy is very fast. So I'm going to start my uh, my speedy running now. Right, uh, let's go. Let's have a race. race. And uh, <laughs> exactly, there we go. So we've started. See, so as you can see with the speed with the gantry system, we're moving backwards and forwards, and we're scanning across the items stepping over each time to do a different line so effectively we're doing lots of lines now depending on the resolution you're using so this would depend on how many lines we're putting in so at the moment on the anodized aluminium i've got 500 dots per inch on this one um 
now this one works well at 500, but you might want to choose 600. You might want to choose 1,000 uh, in anodized aluminium if you're doing fine at CTEL and text. So you've got that option in terms of uh, being a little bit more productive, but maybe less uh, uh, less detail on the really fine text. Um, and again, that, that would change the time it takes to uh, uh, scan backs and forwards because basically it needs to put more lines in. You also general, generally on a plotting laser, uh, uh, increase your productivity if you move along the x-axis so if you see it's moving backwards and forwards it's moving really quickly if we oh, add sorry, you're still going <laughs> <laughs> have you done all your <laughs> yeah we've done, done all four of ours just for proof exactly yeah there we go the, the run time on the galvo for each of these parts was just over five and a half seconds so uh, it's a it's a much quicker operation but obviously i've had to physically load and unload these as i go and he's just been able to sit there talking while the while the machine's churning them out so it's just a lot of cases with these kind of parts what's going to fit better in with your workflow do you want someone to just sat, sit there by the machine chucking bits through it or do you want to free someone up to maybe do something else keep an eye on the laser obviously but uh, but free up to to do something else while that while the laser is running exactly i'm just sitting here doing nothing you know while the laser is working so i don't have to be uh i don't have to be there do, doing the machine i mean I'm in, I'm in the vicinity just in case something happens oh and yeah typically i've changed the camera when it's finished <laughs> there we go so that's finished so again you can see the the, the four done so that took uh that took approximately, uh, well, just under two minutes uh, to do the four. But again, what I usually would say with uh, with one of these is we can probably fit about 12 of these on the bed and it wouldn't take twice, you know, it might, might only take sort of uh, three three and a half minutes to do all 12 in the row. So again, you get you gain in productivity if you can fill out the bed. Um, and then, you know, if the, even if the bed takes half an hour, effectively what you're getting is uh you know half an hour that you can do something else with your time whereas as johnny would know because uh, i think he's he's <laughs> done it before stood in front of a galvo laser uh for for, for for a few days at a time it's um yeah yeah you can't you can't do much else can you <laughs> i've been the lucky winner of uh, running galvo lasers 14 hours a day at times and um, yeah you can't really divert your attention onto anything else just because they're so quick to operate. I mean, this one, yeah. the actual job itself took around about a minute. Feel free to watch back and time it if you uh, if you really want. But the laser of that was only running for around about 22 seconds. So it was literally more time loading and unloading than it was actually running. Yeah. So basically what, you, what you're finding is that, you know, if you have an operator that can that can run it or if you maybe have, say, you know, 10 parts to do, um, and they're all unique. I think that's that's the thing where the Galvo sets itself apart. Yeah. You know, you can do those marks really quickly, get them on, and then get on with with, with the other things you've got to do. Whereas if you've got you know hundreds or thousands of these plates to do, uh, a plotter is definitely going to be uh, more time time you know time efficient. Uh, you know, with your time because you can load up the load up the plate and then maybe either run a second laser or a third laser or a printer or you know answer emails, have a have a coffee, uh, or you know. Do, do whatever you want to do with your time so that's i suppose <laughs> the uh yeah yeah don't don't, don't answer what you do with your time johnny uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are only rumors there are um, rumors but um, but no, absolutely no. The, the Galvo really will excel on things like, say, if you've got a load of sequential serial numbers, so you want part number one, part number two, part number three, you can preset that all in advance. So just keep chucking them through and it's going to advance the data as you go. Um, same with barcodes. If you want the barcodes to advance every time, we can do that as well. Or we can feed it information very easily and quickly. So if we've got a, a whole list of data we want to process, super easy just to push it straight into the machine and have uh, have unique objects as we uh, as we go. Yeah, exactly. Now you can obviously do that with um, uh, with the uh, the plotters as well, uh, but it, it's 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 mainly in the, your design software that you'd do that. So you'd generate your blank, for example, and you can use obviously depending on what design software you're using, use the variable data to to import a 2D barcode or a 1D barcode or serial plates, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and you can you know nest out the uh, nest out the job as well. So you can use you know something like Coral you'd use as print merge. Yeah. uh that that's something where you can you can uh, uh nest out the the job uh also with with regards to the as you see here we're marking on pre uh cut al anodized aluminium plates uh again what this could be is this could be a sheet of engraving laminate uh and so it could be the whole sheet you put in you can engrave 
all that uh, all of it and then it'll cut out as well afterwards so you've kind of got more you know again with the with the with the plotting system you can kind of do the same jobs as the galvo but you maybe go on the ends of the you know larger items as well uh, which, which benefits so for example with the galvo i think your working area there is 120 mil by 120 mil on that it lens is. In practice, you get a tiny, tiny bit more than that at you know, if you bang on the X or the Y axis. If you're right in the centre, you do get a tiny bit more. But yeah, that, that square area is uh, is the designated area of it. Yeah. So I just noticed you were lasering, so I thought I should laser as well because that's what people have come to see lasers. <laughs> so lasers, they shall see. Do you want to do a couple of messages while we're while we're here, mate? Yeah, there's been a few come in. Uh, I'm not sure if. Uh... I'm uh, just trying to find, uh, just reading through them to, uh, uh, so I just bring them up on the screen. Uh, uh, so, 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 so that's fine. And so any ask, ask any questions you'd like. Uh, I'm a teacher from Art College in the UK. And we have a Trotec Speedy 300 laser cutter. Uh, Moment to purchase the second one. Uh, since lots of difficult to teach students use the laser cutter, yes, absolutely. Hi, Elena. It's, it's, it's higher. It's it's definitely something that uh, has been more challenging uh, in terms of uh, installing the machines as well uh, with regards to restrictions um, but we we have got online services so this this is obviously a online session that we're doing uh, just generally uh, to give information to to people that might be interested uh, but we do offer uh, you know either team viewing or online uh, help as well so what's your think it was good to such students uh, uh, I wonder which broadcasting stream software you use. Okay, so it's more about the stream. Uh, so we use uh, StreamYard, I think it is. Now, I'll be perfectly honest indeed, with you. Yeah. Sean, our marketing manager, probably knows a lot more about it than we do uh, because we just use it. <laughs> and she tells us what buttons to press. Uh, but it is quite quite, quite good in terms of uh, what you can do in terms of splitting the screen and, and, and sharing screens and everything like that. So StreamYard is the one that we use, uh, but obviously others are available. Not, not just in the UK as well. All our uh, international subsidiaries use it too, particularly places like Canada. They use it extensively. Yeah. So. And just to see the kind of detail, if again we could focus it. Again, we're infinitely better at focusing lasers than cameras. So there <laughs> we Yeah. There we go. Just we That's get a very, very fine detail text on there. Um, the smallest text I've ever got on with a Galvo laser is just over 0.15 of a millimeter, which was incredibly tiny. Um, you couldn't actually read it with the naked eye, to be honest. But uh, yeah, you can get really, really high detail text on the things. People tend to get grumpy if you put text smaller than about like 0 0.6, 0 0.8 of a millimeter because you just you just can't read it very well. Well, this is it. It's it's it's, it's, it's uh, you know you've got machine readable, which would be the, the barcodes, and then human readable. But um, as I say, if you go to two small then a human can't actually read it anyway um and also i found found where um uh we've had it where we've marked a part uh with a galvo so it's it's like a component and we can mark it so small that uh it's it's a case of after, after a week they go well where did i mark it i can't remember i can't find the mark so you, you've obviously got to make sure that it's it's in a place where uh where, where you know where it's been marked so you can identify it easily um Oh, Anna, hi Anna, how you doing? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, StreamYard is the one that we use, so uh, don't want to do a plug in with that. Um, and again, just answer. We're not sponsored by StreamYard. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. We, we just use we just use it, obviously. Um, and also, thank you very much. Yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you, Anna. And then just going through the comments again. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's official. Uh, it's official. We've told you. Um, <laughs> But with regards to that uh, the training and on online as well, um, obviously you're looking, um, you are looking to do it for your for your students, which which is great. But if we do have uh, what we and I know Johnny, you were you were doing a bit last week uh, when we were trying to practice these demonstrations um, in terms <laughs> of online online training. Uh, so we can use uh, you know Team Viewer in, so we can log in uh, log into your computer and take control mm -hmm. to show you how the software works. It's particularly also... useful in these interesting times. Exactly. Yes, it's definitely something that I've been doing quite a lot of in the last year, uh, a lot more than more than I have been. Uh, also, online demos. So we tend to use, uh, you know, you, you know, use them as uh, to show, again, to show uh, people, prospective customers, uh, what the machines can do, and you know, do their samples as well. So we offer online demonstrations as well as these webinars and also uh, online training as well. Um, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll all be able to greet each other and shake each other's <laughs> hands. Uh, 
uh, at some point. It's going to it's going to be that novelty, isn't it? I mean, we've just we're just over the Christmas of when we talk to somebody, say, "Oh, I hope you had a good Christmas and New Year." I think we've, we're just over that. But I think when uh, when we're all able to shake our hands, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a novelty there. Isn't it? <laughs> Well, this is it. I mean, things like the online demonstrations, uh, it's its a very valuable tool. So even after the, the, the current uh, shenanigans, it's, it's something we're going to keep doing because it's, it's such a valuable thing. People might still be a little bit unwilling or a little bit worried about coming in, or maybe they just don't really fancy a three-hour drive. So... <laughs> So it's a great option just to get a feel for the machines. We can run with your artwork, your materials, if it's something a bit special, and just run the job live in front of you, see exactly how the laser works, exactly how we set it up, and just basically just run you through the entire process of it. So uh, online demonstrations are, are yep. going to be a great tool for, for years to come, I'm sure. Exactly. I suppose just imagine it's like this session, but uh, we can see you as well. <laughs> Shock. I mean, you can obviously turn your camera off if you don't want that to happen. Um, <laughs> but uh, certainly if your, your, your kids are in the room as well, uh, uh, like it was earlier. But um, yeah, basically, and then you can ask us direct questions as well. So it works like this, but obviously it's uh, it's uh, it's more of a one on one rather than a, or maybe a couple on one as, uh, as it was uh, last week when I did it. A demo for a couple of people. Uh, so Mark has asked a question: uh, Do you guys uh, do you buy in the plates in, or do you have a piece of equipment that cuts them uh, to a custom size? Great question. Yes. Yeah, so as 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 Johnny uh, mentioned earlier about the, our materials website, we do offer uh, this service. So we do su do supply uh, anodized aluminium and you know other materials as well, uh, the acrylics and etc. Et and we can cut them down to size. So specifically for the anodized aluminium. Uh, you know, in these plates, actually, we, we've uh, we've uh, cut them out of a big sheet effectively for use in our demonstrations. So, yes, we can offer things like corner rounding, you know, cut to size corner rounding, uh, hole punching and different uh, different um, uh, different materials as well. Uh, just adjust my angle a little bit because of what the sunshine of all things has decided to show its face. That's a novelty. I don't. I don't get that in uh, in Ireland. Not not at the moment. <laughs> Famously, we'll, not. We'll 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 wait until March. We might get some then. Um, yeah. No. Perfect. Uh, yeah. No. Exactly. I think I think that's the thing at the moment. Everybody's in the same boat. I mean, we we, uh, we what we obviously offer here at Trotic is we're trying to show you that we're still here. Um, so we're still here to help you if needs be, um, and you know just just pick up the phone and we we can we can use the technology available now and you know we're we're all doing these new things so we don't mm -hmm. we're not necessarily used to this uh, this this before this is the first time we've uh, done this event hopefully it's been uh, good for everybody. Well, we haven't closed for a single day. We we've kept busy throughout. No. And we've been at pains to stress that because if you've got a laser laser machine or a laser based business. This has got to keep running. We've got to keep looking after you and helping you along with it and uh, and keeping the business uh, ticking along. So we're, it's, it's been vital that we've continued to offer service and support. And uh, yeah, we've, we've been here the entire time. We're, we're going absolutely nowhere. Okay, oh, let, 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 uh, <laughs> Johnny, I have a bit of art. I'd love to see uh, what it's like done on speedy. Is that possible? Yeah. So absolutely, that's Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is part of the demonstration process that we offer, really. Uh, in Love terms to. of, you yeah, know, we, pop we, us an email. Send, yeah, pop us an email. You, we can, you can send us the artwork. You can send us specific material if it's specific items you want to see as well. Yeah, we, yeah. Can do, we can do that live in front of you um, uh, on a demonstration and then send the products back Definitely. to you for, for testing. Definitely. Well. So, it, yeah. and and it doesn't matter what kind of format you got the artwork in either. We we can work with pretty much whatever we like with uh, with Coral Draw. So uh, yeah, we're. Uh, Fire it over. If you send an email to inquiries at trotechlaser.co.uk, and then uh, yeah, that'll uh, that'll find its way to us, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll run some bits off for you. It'd be a pleasure. Perfect. Okay, I think we've got about seven minutes left until we're uh, we're kicked off, or we're good. actually oh, uh, got we're another question from Paul. Oh, there we go. Hi, Paul. Thanks so much for watching so many of these, and uh, and Lothian as well. Thank you so much. You've you've been yeah. ever present throughout, and it's much appreciated. I hope you've uh, I hope you found it useful. Yeah, no, exactly. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. So Paul uh, asked, uh, so any tips for cutting blue uh, foam board for architectural models? I'm currently running multiple passes as uh, the entry cut is sharp, but the exit of cut tapers and loosens, loses um, definition. Yes, this is, so this is what, yeah, so I've got a sample here as well, actually, that I could, I'll, I'll dive, in, dive in and get, but I'll, uh, I'll wait till Johnny gets back. Uh, basically, yeah, so it depends on what thickness of foam you're using, uh, what machine, I assume it's a speedy 
Uh, oh, there we go. Lovely. Um, what what you do get is with the, with the laser beam uh, on a on a plotter. What I suppose is is uh, the fact that it comes in from an angle, so it's 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 gone to the lens and it's focused into a point. It's straight for a little bit and then tapers off. So if you use a longer focal length lens, so for example a uh, a four inch lens uh, would be probably what we'd use for something that Johnny's got in his hands there. Um, yeah. That's that's something that create a lot straighter edge. Now you're always going to get that a little bit, uh, but the four inch lens makes a massive difference uh, in terms of getting that straight edge. Also yeah. focusing it into the material as well. So again, this it's the same technique we might use with acrylic uh, and wood to get a straighter cut edge, uh, even if it's a, on a thinner, say 10 mil acrylic, for example, we'd focus it, try to focus it about a third of the way through the material. And that's certainly mm -hmm. on the speedies. It might be different on different machines, yeah. uh, but speedies, it's about a third of the way through the material. So for for example, uh, if it was, uh, you know, you might, and you got that option as well to, uh, cloud, clouds have come over of the Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Timer lights, happens uh, every week. Energy saving. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that, that I suppose those are the quite tips, but Johnny, you've got the sample there that you. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, first of all, Andy is absolutely right. Yeah, a long lens is gonna help massively for, for working on foams because a short lens while focusing down to a fine point is gonna focus very, very sharply like this. Whereas a longer lens is going to be a lot more straight down. So you get a much straighter edge on it. So a long lens is, is fine because you don't need fine detail because how are you going to get fine detail on this kind of stuff anyway? Also, um, another tip that I would like to share on this is you can overload it with heat. So it's much better to do multiple passes, fast and low power. Bit, Johnny? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, there you go. It's much better to do it quickly lots of times like this one was done i believe it was four passes on this on the q500 so uh low power run it quickly run it lots of times because rather than just trying to annihilate it in one go because then you're going to put too much heat in and uh and you're going to damage the material so just uh, just quickly and repeat it as often as you like i mean some lasers even even 10 passes aren't uh, aren't out of the question for it if that's what it takes yeah again a, a I suppose I'm kind of contradicting you there. It, it does depend on the material, <laughs> material as well, though. So, for example, of course, yeah. uh, I have a customer here. This, this is, I think, a poly, uh, polyurethane foam. It's quite a high density foam. I don't know if you can see that. So that's about an inch thick. Uh, you can kind of see they've, they've stacked the layers up together. Um, so this was done on a speedy 400, 120 watts, uh, four inch lens, one pass. So you can kind of see that oh, nice. you're getting a decent result there. Now, they're not, They this is, a kind of, I suppose this is the, male part they actually take this is the waste product because they obviously want to put the spanners in uh, uh yeah, to, yeah. To what, what's else um but as you can see but they're not they weren't as hugely uh you know didn't have a huge issue with the fact that it would taper off because obviously it's just for packaging um for what they need and they can hide that layer underneath but you know you, we can still see that we're getting a very straight edge with a four inch lens on a speedy uh 400. so that's just the remnant where they're, they're taking the, the recess out to drop the drop the tools in yeah, yeah. Effectively, you've got the. Cool. That's where that's where they load. Excellent. Okay, and Brian's back. Excellent. It's, it's our second favourite Jater. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Close hey, second. Revel reveling in his celebrity status. We've already put <laughs> already put his uh, autograph on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he just he just wanted to screen bomb uh, screen bomb, didn't he? Yeah. He did. <laughs> was it photo bomb? That was the uh, that was it. <laughs> Good, great job, guys. Really, uh, really interesting, um, and plenty of um, interaction from uh, from the crowd as well, which is great. Yeah, no, well, uh, just, just just one thing to note as well. If you talk about blue foam board as well, it's um, there's different types of foam. Again, if it just avoid the PVC foam. Uh, one one thing that to note, just because obviously the the gases that are given off with that. So polyurethane, polyethylene type foam. Those are the ones you want to look at. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the long and short of it is. Let, let us uh, let us help you through it. If you've got a product or an idea and you're wondering what is going to be the best, just just drop us a line. Let's have a chat and we'll, uh, we'll help steer you in the right direction, show you what uh, each machine will do and then uh, give you all the information to make an informed decision. Absolutely. And I also just wanted to um, uh, say to uh, Anna, and, Anna and Elena um, that if they want any advice on what camera equipment and things like that we've been using, um, to go in and out and what works really well with multiple cameras etc um for teaching we're happy to happy to share what we do um we, yeah. it's not spectacular but it seems to work pretty well for us so um if uh if you want us to uh, share any of that just get in touch um inquiries at trotechlaser.co.uk and uh, we'll come back to you and let you know what we've done
Yeah, absolutely. Great, great session. Uh, um, so that is uh, time up, I think, for the morning.